In this video, we're going to talk about set builder and interval notation. So we're going to start with a compound inequality because it's actually easiest to start with this sort of thing. Um, so we're going to have something like 5 is less than or equal to x is less than 8. And if we look at this on the number line, we have 5 and then to the right of that we have 8. What we're describing here are all the numbers between 5 and 8. Everything between 5 and 8. And the fact that we have an equals on the end of the 5 means we include the 5. And in some notation that's a closed circle. And working towards interval notation we're going to use a bracket that opens to the side that's shaded. And then on the other side we don't have an equal sign. We just have a less than. So again in the old notation that would be an open circle but moving towards interval notation we're going to have a parenthesis opening to the side that is shaded. So in interval notation what we want to do is describe where the interval begins, where does it start becoming shaded, comma, and where does it end. And we place this in between brackets and parentheses to include whether or, or to describe whether it includes those endpoints or not. So in our problem we include the 5, reading left to right, so we have a bracket then a 5 in the first location, comma, we end at 8, and it doesn't include the 8, so we have a parenthesis. So we have a closed interval here going from 5, including 5, up to 8, but not including 8. So that's our interval notation. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when it's an unbounded interval, that is when it goes off in uh, a direction and um, doesn't have an ending point. So for example, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So again, if we start by looking at this on a number line, let's put 0 here as a point of reference, and then negative 3 would be to the left of that. So when we describe all the numbers greater than negative 3, that would be everything to the right of negative 3, all those numbers. And we see our equal sign, so that means it includes the negative 3. So again, a bracket opening to the side that's shaded. So as we said before, the interval notation has a, where does it start, comma, where does it end. So we can take care of the where does it start. We have a bracket and negative 3, but the question is where does it end? Because it doesn't end. It keeps going in this direction. And what we do use for symbols to describe this behavior is we use infinity, positive infinity. We assume the positive. So when we write it in the interval notation, we have infinity. And because infinity is describing the behavior as opposed to a specific number, we close that with a parenthesis. So to describe all the numbers greater than or equal to negative 3 in interval notation, we would have a bracket, negative 3, comma, infinity, parenthesis. Okay, let's take a look at another one. So for this one, we'll take a look at x less than 5. So x less than 5, we'll draw our number line, put 0 for point of reference, 5 to the right being positive, and we're describing all the numbers less than 5. That would be to the left of 5. Everything to the left. We don't have an equal sign on the 5, so that would be a parenthesis opening to the shaded side there. So when we go to write where do we begin and where do we end, the ending part's pretty clear. We have a 5 with a parenthesis. But where do we begin? So we must describe this end of the number line. And we know, for example, I wrote 0, but the next number would be negative 1 and negative 2 and so on. So it would be getting smaller, uh, or the number's actually getting larger, but negative. So the way we describe this end is negative infinity. And just like with the positive infinity, we use a parenthesis. So filling in the starting spot, we have a parenthesis, negative infinity, so that the numbers uh, the, in interval notation described by x less than 5 would be parenthesis, 
negative infinity, comma, 5, parenthesis. Let's try one more. Now in this one, what we're going to do is describe all real numbers. Because very often, this is an interval that we're interested in, when it includes everything. And math people's are, people are into symbols, so they have a fancy-looking R that describes all real numbers. On the number line, it's kind of hard to show. Let's put zero here, positives to the right, negatives to the left. We're basically shading everywhere. So in interval notation, where does it begin and where does it end, reading left to right, from the left side, we have that negative infinity. So negative infinity, negative infinity will be where it begins, and on the right side it goes on forever, and we call that positive infinity, or just plain old infinity. And so that will go to infinity with a parenthesis. So the interval that describes everything, all real numbers, is parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, infinity, parenthesis.